Hello, everyone. So we are now proceeding with a different uh, system to do the CEO blog. Uh, it will uh, hopefully be more frequent, a bit shorter, a bit more spontaneous, uh, and uh, will keep you abreast of new development uh, while removing some of the formality of previous blogs. So today I want to give you a brief update about uh, where we are with certificates of added competence for the leader and resident category. So uh, this opened uh, a, a few weeks ago, and we currently have 459 uh, members of the college uh, who have uh, are in the process or have completed the process of applying for a Certificate of Added Competence, or CAC. Um, people who are currently involved in a third-year residency program should not be anxious. We will uh, come to them in terms of defining a process for them to acquire uh, a CAC. It's interesting to me still because there are quite a bit of tension that uh, continue to take place in relation to what we're doing with CACs. It does not surprise me, and you need to know that this is a tension we're very well aware of. So uh, at a meeting, for example, of the Society of Rural Physicians, which I was at, there were uh, family doctors who practice in rural area who asked, well, how can you place um, sports and exercise medicine on the same level as, say, FP anesthesia, which is essential to meet the needs of rural communities? And I guess my answer to that is that, on the one hand, we need to support the recognition of enhanced skills to meet the needs of communities, and that is our prime objective. There's no doubt about that. At the same time, we are a member-based organization, and we have a responsibility to listen to our members when a group of them come to us and say, well, listen, we, we really would like uh, us to get a recognition of enhanced skills training that we've acquired in a particular area. And so this is the tension we're trying to manage. So um, the next group that uh, has been activating for the college to uh, recognize enhanced skills in a particular area are the family physicians who've acquired enhanced skills in the area of addiction medicine. And uh, uh, this is an example to say that uh, we all know that uh, we all have patients who, with addictions who sometimes uh, challenge our own uh, knowledge base as continuing comprehensive family physicians. So do we have a way that we can recognize those among us who acquire enhanced skills in this area? And at the same time, if we're going to, to define what the enhanced skills competencies are in that area, can we define what is core, what we should expect every family physician to be able to be competent in, in the area of addictions? So, so uh, there will be recommendations to our board, uh, which is meeting in the next 10 days, regarding um, some thinking around the development of a CAC in addictions medicine. And as we do that, we will need to define the core competencies that we expect all family physicians to have in uh, this particular care area. So this is where we are. Uh, this is where we hope to be going. And uh, as usual, your comments and your feedback is welcome. So with this blog, uh, you will see a link that enables you to uh, provide us with those comments and feedback. And uh, I will endeavor to either respond to this directly or through uh, a member of our senior staff. So have a good the remaining part of your week and a great uh, long weekend, everyone.